Okay. Um, can I call on William Martin and alert Paul McKenna that I'll be coming to him next? Yeah. And then if, if, whoever I've named, if they cover the, the other microphone, we'll have all the better speed. Yeah. <coughs> I'd uh, just like to thank Pat for joining us today. Um, the Baron needs to focus on the smart economy and the green economy, the Jeeva sustainable economy, why is Ireland so far behind in the fiber to the home and fiber to the business? Recessions breed innovation, so surely Ireland needs the best telecommunications in the world to become a global player and achieve our goals. Yeah, why are we so behind in fiber, Minister? That's your responsibility. It is. Can I just put the question in a slightly wider context? And this goes back to what Ben was saying earlier on about. <clears throat> living in a world where resources may be scarce. I know Ed buys into this and I think um, it's going to dominate politics in the next 10, 20 years is resource limits. Limits in water, limits in food, as you said, limits in energy and limits in climate, what the climate can take. And that actually now is actually, the, those limits to resources are the key constraints to what will happen in the next two decades. And we'll determine what markets evolve and what economies evolve, which civilizations succeed. Because they are real, they're urgent, they're immediate, they scale way above the financial crisis we have in terms of the consequences and the effect. So we have to, it's not that easy to replace oil. For every calorie of energy in food, you put 10 calories of energy in to get it. And we'll never have anything like oil. It's the most energy dense, transportable, wonder liquid for energy that we'll ever have. So it's not easy to get alternatives. But there's two sides to this equation. Okay, we have the resources, we have to get, use less resources, and, but we also have to use them efficiently. And that's where I think this whole new digital economy comes in. It's actually an opportunity. It's one of the few areas I see where there's massive increases in productivity can be achieved through new faster computers, to faster and more energy efficient telecommunication systems. And fiber is part of that. Fiber is the critical infrastructure. Um, we are behind in, in the deployment of fiber, although the reality is we're not as far behind as sometimes we give ourselves, we, we, we're kind of quite negative on, on, on our performance as a country. We're primarily behind because in 2002, 2003, 2004, we had a short term ownership model in Aircom that didn't invest in broadband. I was just looking to take money out of the company as quickly as possible. Uh, and that brought us right down the International League. We've come back slightly in recent years, the mid-table now in Europe. We have particular difficulties because 40% of our homes are one-off houses in the country. And it's very difficult to get fibre to those because it's, it's the, the expenses in the civil engineering. We may have to adopt, and we are already adopting, a number of other non-fibre solutions, wireless, um, 3G, uh, WiMAX and other solutions. Um, so, and we may have an advantage in a sense because we also, because we develop those technologies quicker. But it is crucial, the whole communications network is an essential in response to this resource limited world we're facing into because it allows you, for example, if you have a good fiber connection or a similar speed connection, you can start through teleconferencing. Uh, so you don't have to travel and use oil in the transport system. Our, uh, also, just generally for ourselves, the country, the opportunity, my business, I, I, I run a very small tourism business, as it happened. I was able to use that £10,000 I borrowed off AIB to put ads in the New York Times and eventually to go online in a way that I was a very small business, but no one knew it. I was a global business. So I told your mother borrowed this. Just my mother. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it's an example of how far it can work in terms of, for my small business, with my mother answering the phone, <clears throat> They didn't know whether I was in Trump Towers or whether I was in... But you great mother. She great mother. <laughs> so that's why it's important. And I am committed uh, in government to kind of do whatever we can to, to deliver it. And I think we can. But when will it happen? Well, it is. I mean, the, there is a number of projects happening. Um, we have about 70% of our... 65% now of our homes have broadband connections. Only 70% of our homes have a computer. So, you know, there are certain limits we're bumping up against in terms of how we actually deploy yeah, For small it. business, it's it is just fine. You're it not is. at the races. So no, it's not. Yeah. But we are going, one of the, okay, there's a whole range of different projects, and I won't go into the long list of them, but one of the projects we're joining is going out to 100 schools this year, putting in 100 megabit connectivity. One of the ideas behind that, I'm going to go to every school in the next three years, 
is that if you run a high, very high speed connection to a school, be it fiber or wireless, fixed wireless, whatever, it may be much easier then to go to a neighboring business. The, the economics of it, for the telecoms company to say, okay, well, I ran into the school in the middle of that, of that town, there's John Murphy <coughs> sales, whatever, next door, it's much cheaper to run it in. Yeah, and should it be a public utility that people have rights and access to it, or are we in the marketplace? What we're doing is providing public access to state-owned fibre along our road network, along the canals, along the railway lines. The question as to whether it should be state-run business, I suppose one of the difficulties is now it's not just any one platform. You can get to the business with cable line, or fixed wireless, or satellite, or WiMAX, there's a whole range of different solutions. And I'm not too sure if the state is best place to make the technological call as to which network is the right one to do. I think there is a benefit in using competition to keep the price down and actually to solve some of the technological solutions in a way that I'm not sure the sure state would do. But if you differentiate between the, the network, the fibre itself, and then the services that you add to it, the, the marketplace may be best for the services, but has have, have Patricia's members who are, who are in small business and, and are without it, how are they suffering, Patricia? Well, I, I mean, there's, there's no question this is one of the top issues, and for, for a friend who has it, obviously it's not an issue, but for those who don't, yeah. it's an absolute. Uh, and the whole idea of, in terms of truly the rural economy and actually diversifying beyond the greater Dublin region, um, there, there is no scope. And even, like, I mean, outside of Tala, you know, you, you get into various spots straight away. So I think there's, um, it, it, it's actually interesting that at Social Partnership Talks earlier in the year, this is the number one combined issue. Everyone can agree on this. But it's just a question like everything else. You know, do we need another report? Do we need another strategy? Or just do we need to get on with it? Like this idea of the schools, like I know my brother personally ran that strategy out in the third world five years ago. And here we are in the developed world running this in the next three years. Like, I mean, we really need to get serious about this if we are going to become the smart economy. And we can't just keep banding those words around. Minister? No, I'd agree on the argument. I mean, I. This year, we put in a major new transatlantic <coughs> fibre connection running from Derry into Dublin. Uh, we are going out to those schools. We've, we've, we've signed a 220 million national broadband scheme contract, which as we speak is going out to those rural areas that can't get broadband to make sure that they can. Um, we've just spent 200 million putting fibre in in 90 something metropolitan rings in every. In, 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 the most You're heading up to them then. The rings are there outside we some spent, of these towns. We spent 40 million, 50 million in the ESP wrapping fibre along the electric power lines. Like, there is, this is hugely important. We have to be ahead of the game. But we're not sitting back just watching it and thinking uh, it, it, it isn't at all. There is actually significant investment going in. And, um, and the results are. That's, the, to, macro, that's no, the macro no, so, view. Well, okay, well, well, the micro well, view is I'm in business, I don't have it. But, but, well, the, the reality is, in is, two years in office, the number of people with broadband connections have gone from half a million to one and a quarter million. That's in the last two years. We've been the fastest growing country in the OECD in terms of broadband take-up. We are probably the fastest growing country in the, in the world in terms of mobile broadband take-up, which for our circumstances may be a good long-term technological solution. So we're not doing nothing. We're not standing still. But we're, what we have to make sure that will not happen is what happened to 2002, 2003, 2004, where in a lack of investment by the key owners in our utility and the cable company actually saw us falling behind. And that our policy is basically saying to new owners of Aircom, to the cable network, and to the other mobile phone uh, providers, it, 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 it's pushing them to invest. <coughs> we, they're investing about 700 million euros a year in these new networks. The real risk we have at this present time is that falls back as, as business confidence becomes <coughs> low, as capital becomes short. Uh, and that's our, our, our key uh, issue as well as get user state money. Yeah. Do you want to come back on it? Minister, my name is Shane Ormsby. I run a private uh, third level college in the middle of Swords Village, about 500 yards from this building. The maximum speed that I can get for internet access in the middle of Swords Village is 8 megabytes. Okay, I've called every internet service provider in the country and that is the maximum we can deliver. So the issue is not about getting into the rural house, um, it's about getting to a business with over a thousand students in the middle of Swords Village. No, I'd agree. I think that's why we're going out, we're, we're picking schools and putting a hundred megabit connectivity in each point. As I said, uh, I don't, I'd have to, I mean, I mean, if you come up to me afterwards or send me details, I'll certainly push whatever I can because we, your sort of business needs more than eight megs.